I'm a book. I'm the one, the only Bible. Want to talk? No. OK. I'm Gid, by the way. Gideon. What do you want from me? I just want to talk. <laughs> you are the flash of light that's going to save me. Is that right? So what's the gun for? You seem like a good guy. Not a good guy. So a bad guy who talks to Bibles. Are you feeling convicted? No, shut up. A lot of pressure to put on one guy, killing someone and all. Hey everyone, I'm Quinn Marie with Hollywood First Look Features, and today we are talking to Raja and Bradley Gosdell from the new film, Gun and a Hotel Bible. Congratulations on the film, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us. Of course. So let's get right into it. What inspired you to make this film in the first place? Because it is based on a play. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So this this start as you say, it started as a play. Uh, and my co-writer Dan Florin, uh, I approached him uh, to write this play with me uh, because I got inspiration from a Beatles song. Uh, it's a song called Rocky Raccoon, uh, where he checks into a room only to find Gideon's Bible. And I thought, uh, what if that Bible was personified? And we kind of put ourselves into the dramatic world of this song. Uh, and that's where the inspiration came from. So it's, uh, it's a man personified Bible. And uh, the Bible sort of has 45 minutes to talk him out of making a big mistake in his life. And uh, that's so interesting. Yeah, drama ensues from there. Um, and then, you know, we, we put it up and, and, then, uh, and then we made it into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> How many people die by your hand? If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. That's when I met Cindy. <laughs> and she lit up my life. Man, her singing, her dancing, she was fearless. It's one of those things, you know, religion is difficult to to address and to put on on screen how was it with you and because you wrote this with a couple different people mm -hmm. um addressing those those very uh sensitive topics and and you know these are questions that inevitably everybody has asked themselves that you that you address in this film so was it difficult for you to address them in a way that um was respectful and and you know kind of encompassing what everyone else has been thinking yeah I certainly hope so. You know, we can't speak for everyone's uh, religious views out there. Uh, but what the story is about is someone trying to untangle and understand the stories that they grew up believing. And some of those stories we believe because we need to just to survive. Sometimes we believe stuff because it is true. Uh, and sometimes we believe it just because the people surrounding us believe it. And those aren't always the opposite. Sometimes two things can be true at once. Uh, and, and so I think it applies to anyone who's thinking about their life. And in terms of respecting the specifics of uh, our play, you know, Dan Florin and I uh, are just big believers in, in good artistic collaboration. Uh, and that has been our experience. We've worked together for 10 years now. And so during the process of writing the story, we would take time to make sure that we're writing this story in a way that everyone felt comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in a way that's supposed to serve the dramatic narrative of the story and the sincerity of what we were trying to do, which is personify the Bible and to have two characters who can sort of duke it out and ask these big questions. We as playwrights never wanted to preach to the audience. We, our characters preach at each other. Our characters get mad at each other. Our characters, you know, share moments of laughter as well. Um, it's not all doom and gloom in this play and movie. Uh, but we as playwrights and, and writers never wanted the audience to feel like here are our beliefs put on you. Um, so some questions are left unanswered, which some people don't like, but we think is important uh, to keep it accessible. Uh, and sometimes our characters get stumped because we want to leave the audience in a position where it's not just affirming or uh, degrading what they already believe. There's no straw man in this play. And I think that's how you deal with any kind of conflict that you, you, you trust and you believe that the right answer is somewhere in between, not because what we believe is wrong, but because we as humans always have the capacity to empathize and understand more. Uh, and it was, you know, part of that, part of the process of doing this well was starting with that belief and letting that guide us throughout the whole process. Now, Raja, tell us about your experience writing uh, or uh, being involved with this film, because 
this isn't your typical type of, of film that you've normally done in, in the past, right? No, I had none of my normal tricks. No talking critters, no CGI. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually wanted to do a movie like this my entire career. I was, uh, and unfortunately, um, I'm related to one of the playwrights. So um, I, I had an inside track and they, they graciously uh, allowed me to, uh, to get involved and, and put this on film. And um, It was an easy choice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it was just great to do, just completely stripped down. It's all about the acting and all about the words. And um, it, was, it was just a delight to do. And so, you know, transferring it from uh, play to film, um, you know, for me, it was great. It came fully formed, like the uh, performances were there, the, the staging was all there. So it was really just about, um, you know, choreographing the camera to, to sort of, um, go with the rhythms of the play and, and to tell a story that they were already telling. Awesome, and it was, was it your first time with you guys working together or have you guys worked together before? Uh, Brad did a couple parts. He did a little thing in Smurfs and did a little thing way back in like one of the Scoobies, um, but it was the first time like we really like work work together. And, and uh, in a sense, he was the producer, so I was working for him. So it was, uh, it was great. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, congratulations, you guys, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We really appreciate it. Everyone, be sure to check out Gun and a Hotel Bible on demand. I'm Quinn Marie, and you've been watching Hollywood First Look Features. He loves you.